A lot of us are stuck at home and are looking for some fun ways to stay entertained while quarantining. So why not spruce up your makeup skills? Because I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll see those makeup videos on how to do the perfect eyebrow or eyeliner, and it's like 20 minutes long, and I normally don't have the time, but now I think we have the time. Aubrey Aquino chatted with professional makeup artist Morgan Merrill about the, her best-kept makeup tips and her online classes. Take a look. Professional makeup artist Morgan Merrill is here to show us how doing your makeup can actually be therapeutic. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So as a professional makeup artist, what does your normal work day look like? Oh my goodness. So it can definitely vary. Um, during the week, I can see clients anything from engagement photos, baby photos, birthday parties, and then weddings is usually filled with, or excuse me, weekends are usually filled with weddings and birthday parties. So you stay pretty busy. And right now you're actually offering online classes. How does that work? You can relax and still have some fun with this, right? Yes, so my online classes are done via Zoom, and it's really fun. About 15 to 20 women join me online, and we walk through a complete makeup application. And what I like to do is break them down between eyes and then face. And so we do two separate um, classes where everything is broken down, and I literally show them kind of almost like a YouTube video, but I'm right there with them. So I'm watching them do the technique as we walk through it. I mean, can you teach this to anybody? I can, yes. We've had all different age ranges. The youngest person I had was 16, and so far the oldest I've had is probably, I mean, we never divulge the age, but probably in their late 60s, early 70s. So everyone is welcome, whether you are a beginner or intermediate. It is, I do have more of a basic um, application, so if you're a little bit more advanced, I am going to be coming up with some more um specific classes such as a, a smoky eye class or highlighting and contouring is really popular as well. Okay, fun. So give us some tips. Is it important to prep your skin before you apply makeup? And if so, what should we be using? Absolutely. So I'm also a licensed esthetician. So skin is definitely the main goal with any application. It's kind of like painting a wall. You're going to prime it before you actually slap paint on it. The same concept goes with our makeup. So for me, the key products that I really recommend to clients are three things. An exfoliation, a serum, and an SPF with, uh, or a moisturizer with SPF in it. Now, if you are gonna be getting your photos taken, I don't recommend a moisturizer with SPF in it, just because sometimes that zinc in SPF can do a flashback. So I do recommend just for that really small amount of time to not wear SPF. But for a regular basis, having an exfoliation, one I recommend to clients, this is um, an image or medic polish. So it's something that you can actually use every day. It has very gentle beads to exfoliate the skin gently. And this, again, you can use every day. Um, and then also a serum. So serums are really important because they actually have more active ingredients and they can be more hydrating than uh, a moisturizer by itself. So one that I really recommend is one with hyaluronic acid. Um, and Image has one, um, another one I like is a brightening serum. So this will help to actually brighten the skin over time. It's nothing immediate. Um, and then completing that with your SPF moisturizer. Now you wanna make sure that for a daily basis, your SPF is around 30 for every day, up to 50. I always tell people, if you go anything over 50, again, I'm not a doctor, but over 50, that's usually a little bit more chemical in it. So I say to stay between that 30 to 50 SPF range for daily use. All right, so after you prep your skin, then you gotta put on the foundation. Um, that can be a little bit challenging sometimes to match the different skin tones. Absolutely, so a um, couple things to look for when you are matching your foundation is first and foremost your undertone, whether you are warm, cool, or neutral. A fun little trick to test that is actually looking at your wrist and checking out the veins of your wrist. So if you see something that's more of a blue vein, you tend to be more cool. When it's more of a green vein that you see, it could be more warm. And if you either can't tell or you see both, that tends to mean you're neutral. Now this is may not work for everyone, but it's kind of that general basic blanket rule to look for. 
Also, you're going to notice if you have a little bit more yellow undertones, then you're probably more on the warm side. Red is usually a little bit more cool. But you want to make sure that red's not just like you're flushed. I mean, we can all be a little red at times. So really wondering and noticing when you're red, why you're red, and where you're red. Gosh, um, there are so many um, tips here just on foundation, but I know you can help yeah. our viewers and, and women or men learn all more about colors that make for their brows, for their blush. So where can our viewers find you on social media if they want to get more in-depth with the makeup tips that you offer? Yes, so I'm on uh, Instagram at mmbeauty underscore Sacramento, and then my website is pretty easy. It's morganmerrillbeauty.com. All right, Morgan Merrill for all the makeup tips you need, and you can do it right from home. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This interview involves commercial content. The products and services featured appear as paid advertising.